And one more thing I can mention is uh, it's not going to work in this case, but it's going to be we can do in front and in front polygroup. So in front polygroup will work because it is everything in front of this face and the polygroup. Um, on this case here, we can do behind, and that's going to take everything behind this and polygroup. So we'll do behind and polygroup, and then I'll go ahead and do all of those polys as well. Anyways, how we stole those polygroups. So if we roll over this one and do uh, polygroup, we'll do polygroup a single poly, make this a little bit easier. So we're going to polygroup a single poly, and we're going to touch this one. And this blue might be the same as that blue, so I want to change it. So I'm going to touch it again and hold on Alt, and that'll toggle through these. So I'm going to choose like um, whatever, something different, red. So if I touch this one, it's going to be red, 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 and red. If I want to borrow a polygroup, it's like, you know what, I want these two polygroups to be the same. I want to steal this orange one and make this one orange. I can, I can hover over this, tap it, hit shift, and that will go ahead and hold that in memory. So now it has the orange polygroup in memory, and now wherever I touch it will be an orange polygroup. So there's something you can keep in mind. You can go through here, and now I can change these if we want to to an orange polygroup here. Now we've talked about holding down alt and painting faces like so, so you can go ahead and just paint all these faces to treat them as a single poly, so QMesh single poly, and I'll just treat all those as a single poly. Um, another thing you can do is copy and steal faces and take faces uh, along with you. So let's go ahead and do that. So a couple different ways we can go ahead and pull like a hole through the cylinder would be to go ahead, we can do a couple things. We'll insert a single edge loop. We can insert a single edge loop here. But when we go to the bottom, we don't really know exactly where that single edge loop is going to line up, so let's not do that. Another thing we can do is we can do a split, um, oops, we want to do a split point, but when I do a split point, I'm having a hard time grabbing this inside point, and uh, it could be a little bit messy. So a really clean way to do this is to go ahead and do an inset, let's do an inset at polygroup all, and what we're going to do is paint these polys here, and then it's going to treat this as a, oops, actually painted a little bit more than I thought. I'm going to make a really small brush size and hold down Alt. Hmm, still grabbing it. You know what? I'm going to go over a face, choose poly group, a single poly, tap that face, tap Alt just to grab a new poly group, and just go ahead and just tap all the way through. So I'm not going to paint these ones. So now with this poly group all, I'm going to go to inset poly group all, and now when I inset this poly group, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and do both of them at the same time. If I go ahead and do polygroup a single poly, I'm going to paint these the exact same polygroup here. Yeah, so this is the same color, it's the exact same polygroup. So now if I hover over this one and do inset polygroup all, if I just choose that, it's going to inset all of these as little tiny wedges. Not what I want. I want to do inset region. And now when I choose inset region, as I drag this in, it's actually going to update this single, this other side at the same time. So now what I can do is do a Q mesh polygroup. Let's do polygroup island just to make it safer. Polygroup island. I'm just going to pull it straight through. Boom. So now we have a little hole in the middle of our object here. But I'm actually going to undo that. I'm just going to pull these back just a little bit. So I'm going to pull this one in, and this is a polygroup island, so I can pull this one into two if I want to. So let's say I want to let's pull this one a little bit further. Let's say I want to steal these faces here and make like a cylinder that gets uh, kind of inset in this kind of, uh, instead of going in here and doing like a brush insert cylinder. Now th when I do an insert cylinder, there's going to be like an insert cylinder poly mesh, the default one, which is 32. I can actually go in here and do um, brush insert, pull one out of my insert brushes and choose one that will maybe match, so like 12. And that'll match it. And because I have solo on, that's the reason why it's disappearing. So if I turn solo off, it won't disappear. So that one at least matches, but you kind of kind of have to match it up, and it's kind of a pain. Instead of doing all that, what I'm going to do is Q Mesh Polygroup Island, and this is a polygroup island in there. This other polygroup back here is the same, but since it isn't a touching that one, it's an island. And if I pull up on this one, it's going to want to snap to that edge. However, if I pull up on that one and hold down Control, it'll actually pop that whole thing off. And you can do this with single polys. So if you go over here and do, um, let's choose a single one over here. We'll do a Q-mesh, a single poly. And if you pull this up, it wants a Q-mesh, right? Well, as soon as I hold down Control, it's going to pop that face off. Now I can continue to Q-mesh. So we can Q-mesh a single poly here, no problem. Or I can Q-mesh a, uh, now in this case, it is a polygroup island, but it's also just an island. So if I just choose island here, It'll go ahead and do that. And now what I can do 
because it's an island, I can hover over phase. I can polygroup an island, so I can just tap this thing and hold down Alt and just cycle through. And because this thing isn't touching any other uh, polygons, uh, it's an island. Same thing with this one. This is an island. This is an island. So now these are all islands all by themselves. Uh, so now that I have this one, I can hit Q Mesh and I can do Flat Island and I can just pull this up and I can keep doing, just keep pulling up uh, these Q Mesh things and making you know more and more divisions. Another thing I can do, instead of making divisions, as I pull this up, if I hold down Shift, it'll actually turn it into a, like a move while snapping it to that to that uh, axis that I have selected. So, you know, that's something that's also very very useful. Is if I do Q mesh a single poly, I can go ahead and just pull this thing out, and then I hold down Shift, and it'll actually treat it as a move. Hold down Shift, or I can like you know continue to Q mesh, and I can hold down Alt as I pull through, or I can just pull through here like so. I can hold down Alt and uh, tag some of these and then I can pull this one off, hold down control and then I'll Q mesh that as a single poly because we tagged them as white and then we can go ahead we don't want to Q mesh a single poly here we want to do maybe an island so you can see how quickly you can uh, you can make new and different shapes for you. Now if you want to go ahead and crease all of these all at once, if I hit D it's got some really weird creasing I'm going to hit, you know, it's got this side crease for some reason. I'm going to go ahead and go to my geometry crease menu, and I'm going to uncrease all. So when I hit D, everything just subdivides and softens, right? Um, there's a couple things I can do. I can do a crease by tolerance, and this is the same thing as a polygroup by to angle tolerance. So if I change my angle tolerance to like, let's try 45 again, and hit crease, it's going to go through. And if the angle is in between faces, is less than 45, it'll go ahead and crease it. So you can see it creased all of really the hard edge shape. So if I hit D now, it's actually creased pretty much all the areas I want to. Now if this one's kind of iffy, it's like, you know what, I kind of wanted to crease that one. Just go in here with crease really quick, choose edge and crease it, or you can undo that and you can just keep changing your angle threshold. So if we hit, um, instead of doing a crease by 45 tolerance, maybe lowering that and you can hit crease or raising it to hit crease depending on what you want to see. Uh, another thing you can do that's really useful is go ahead and mix polygroups increasing like we've done. So we can go ahead and do, let's go to our polygroup menu. Uh, we'll go ahead and group by angle normal threshold. Max angle is 45 by default, so we'll go ahead and do that. You can see it didn't pick up there, so if you want a visual representation, we can lower that to 31. Oh, there we go. So this one is now its own polygroup. You can visually see that. And now you can go up here to your crease menu, choose crease by Crease PG, crease by polygroups, hit D, and you can see now we're creased how we want. And of course, you can go in here with your edges and say, hey, you know what, crease, edge, don't want to crease that one, don't want to crease that one, actually didn't want to crease that one or that one. So you can very quickly go in and do most of your creasing and then just go in here and decide which ones you want creased and which ones you don't.